Yeah, some more BS analysis on uh, the Ottawa victory 3-2 over the Toronto Maple Leafs game 2 for the Leafs. Alright, first, let me just go on a little bit of a rant here. Anything that has to do with the Bell 5 PVR, I don't care if you're the person who made the circuit board, I don't care if you're the person who has the channels, who runs anything, any the power cord, anything associated with the Bell 5, I want to give you a big... I tried to tape this game, so I will state right at the beginning, I did not watch this game because, you know, I was a silly person and put it on my PVR before I went to darts. And apparently it's blacked out on some channel because Ottawa, heaven forbid that crappy city, allows access to a game when I'm in Toronto or I'm near Toronto. I'm in Curtis now outside of Toronto. Apparently 4K was blacked out. Uh, but if I went to the Toronto TSN, I got it. And of course, when I recorded it, guess what? No message, no nothing. Why would people want to think, like, maybe if the person's taping the Toronto-Ottawa game, they might want to not be on the Ottawa blackout station, but there's nothing that tells you this. So anything associated with this, you idiots. It's Toronto-Ottawa. They're the same goddamn province. Why are you blacking out an Ottawa game? For God's sakes. Ottawa needs fans. You think Ottawa's playing Carolina and they're getting a lot of fans? Watching the goddamn game, you're going to black it out? Why, so I can pay for NHL ice to see the Ottawa Senators? Holy sh... That must be a Melnick bullshit. So anyways, imagine my surprise as I come home from darts and put on the game. And I'm... There's nothing there. Apparently I chose the Blackout channel. Blackout the Ottawa Center. Are you kidding me? They got 50 fans. What an absolute disgrace. But I will tell you, when I turned on the game and saw 3 nothing Ottawa, maybe I wanted to give them a thank you and hand over, like, you saved me a little bit from watching some garbage. But I was ended up, and I watched in the first two minutes of watching the game, Spezza scores a power play goal, then Nylander gets a power play goal, and then I watched ten more minutes of absolute garbage hockey. It's fair enough to say the Leafs... Not as advertised. Ottawa's a bad team. I don't. I mean, Ottawa, you're talking about all oh, your, oh, we're we're on our way. You you, you got Shane Pinto as your second set. You're you're going nowhere. For God's sakes. You're gonna work hard. I don't give you. I'll give you that. You got that on the lease. You're gonna work hard. You're gonna work hard in the lease. But that's like saying, you know, uh, uh, you say bolts a little bit faster than me. Like it's you're. you're, you're you're not giving yourself a lot of credit to say you outworked the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe the most heartless team I've seen in a long time. Woo, you outworked them. You're still going to lose to them more than you're going to beat them, but fair enough. You're a team on the rise, Ottawa. Way to go. Yeah, I'll talk to you in 10 years when you're when you're still mid-pack. Because uh, you got a couple things you got to work on. I know Holberg's just had 45 saves, but it's, it's, it's Holberg. Your other goalie is Matt Murray. You got Gustafson in the in in in, in the minors. Maybe he turns out to something. Uh, okay, fair enough. Anyways, let's get to what I saw. So I will specify. I didn't watch. I probably watched probably the 18 minute of the third period. That's the only live hockey I watch because heaven forbid Bell satisfies my needs. Blacks out Ottawa. Blackout Ottawa. <laughs> Ottawa's starving for fans. Maybe Melnick doesn't... He can't afford his, his, his island anymore. I, I don't know. Anyways, what I saw was disgusting after the power plays. Bunting, yeah, very good. So if I were to say the best player that I saw over that, you know, 18-minute stretch, Spezza for whatever time he was on the ice, but when he wasn't on the power play, it was not effective. But Bunting seemed to be causing some mayhem. Good for him. Caused the penalty. Got another goal. You're thinking, okay, maybe we're back in this game. And I saw the shots were something ridiculous, like 22-2. to two. I don't know. 
And Holmberg made some nice saves, no doubt. I'm sure he made some nice saves before, and I guess Morazic was hurt. Campbell made some great saves as well. But let me focus in on what I saw. What I saw is some atrocious defense played by Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall. I mean, disgraceful. I saw the goals. Hey, Muzzin, maybe, maybe take a stride. Did Muzzin and Hall remind me, and this is going to age me, they remind me of the Brian Curran, Chris Kotsopoulos defensive stalwarts of the past. It's terrible. First two games, I will tell you, Justin Hall ain't like he was last year. No doubt. He's, I, I don't know, maybe he forgot training camp started. And Jake Muzzin has been the worst defenseman on the team, and that says a lot. Because I saw Dermont and Sandine get pushed around again. We got, what, Brody? Brody's a great defenseman. You want to know why he plays defense? You imagine that? Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall trying to jump into a friggin' rush or try to jump out of the zone early? For God's sake. I don't understand. And yeah, the penalty to Tavares at the end was a terrible call. He lifted a stick. I guess you can't do that anymore. But who cares? I'm not going to sit here. I'm not a Montreal Canadian fan and whine about it. They called it. It wasn't like the Toronto Maple Leafs were pressuring the offensive zone at the time. So Sheldon Keith loses his crap on that penalty. Here's an idea. Lose your crap on your friggin' defense and your lack, or maybe your GM, because you don't have any forwards with any talent after the first. Well, let's go to that piece. You know, you break it down. You got, a, you know, I think you loaded up a line. He did that against Columbus. I guess Sheldon Keith can't figure stuff out that you can't load up one line and then have three lines that have nothing to offer. You just can't do that. Maybe thought process. You've tried it many times. It don't work. You call it a nuclear option. I call it a stupid option. But let's take a look at that line. Tavares. Useless. He can't skate. Here's You, you break down. You go back and you go, oh, where did the Leafs go wrong in this Shanna plan? Well, let me help you out with that. It wasn't Nylander. Because Nylander's the only goddamn one with talent out there right now. Nylander, the guy who makes four point or four million less than than Mitchie. The guy who actually can shoot the puck. The guy who can score. The guy who can control the puck. Granted, he doesn't like going in the corner. I probably wouldn't like going in the corner either. But he puts up numbers. I don't know, two goals, two games. How's Mitchie doing? Not doing the same. Makes four million more than Nylander, but we hear about Nylander's contract was the was the stop of the Leafs. That's nonsense. His contract looks pretty damn good. I saw what Brady Kachuk just got. I'm telling you, Nylander's contract looks pretty good. Where it went wrong was the signing of John Tavares. I remember being in my trailer park. I have a trailer park in the summer, and someone yelling, "Wow, we got John Tavares!" Yeah. I thought it may be the worst signing I've ever heard. $11 million for a guy who can't skate. Can't skate. He does not have NHL wheels. He cannot skate. It's been three years he can't skate. Don't think he's going to grow a set of legs and start skating all of a sudden. He's an ineffective player. I would say he's maybe a third-line center we're paying $11 million for. That was the start of this nonsense. He's great leadership. Yeah, great. You know who's got great leadership? My boss, but... He ain't playing in the NHL. Then you get into the Austin Matthews. Oh, well, well Austin Matthews obviously is the only guy with talent on the team because when he comes back, all of a sudden they'll start scoring. And maybe even even Mitch will will, will, will start contributing with his assists because he gives it to Matthews and Matthews does the rest. Matthews is the one with the most talent the Leafs have ever had, ever. He's the best player they've ever had. And guess what? Coming into unrestricted or restricted free agency, I'm going to bet you Arizona would have rolled up the Brinks truck with $15 million and would have offered it to him. So signing him for $11.8 million actually makes sense because he's a good player, the best player on the team, obviously, can shoot, score, hit, work, has talent, has many options to his game. And then you got Mitchie. Who sits out. I, I'm just as good as Austin Matthews. Piss off. You're not even the same league. You're not even as good as Nylander. Nylander's better than you. 
well, I, I, I need to play. $10.8 million. This is Tavares and Marner are making 21 or what? $21.8 million. And by themselves, they cannot drive a line. Not one of them. They're playing on the same line. How effective were they against Ottawa? It was Nylander running the ship? Ineffective, $21.8 million. Cannot drive a line by themselves. They did all right together. And that's why I say you should put Marner and Tavares together on the second line so they get the second defenseman and put Nylander and Matthews together. That would just make sense. I don't care who you throw on the wing. Richie, Bunting, my daughter. I don't care who you throw on the friggin' line. Disgraceful. Those two contracts is why Dubis will be fired. Now, Tavares, I would argue, is the worst because you can't trade him. Can't trade him. Now, you can say he got hurt last year. Yeah, he got hurt. <laughs> okay. No one ever has been hurt. Are the Leafs going to make the playoffs? I don't know. They might. But this is not a, this is, this is not a team that has any semblance of, of working. So if I take that $21.8 million and I spend it a little differently, who could I have? Oh, I could have Hyman back. Hyman, Hyman against Marner. Who do I take? The one who should be wearing a tutu and leotards or the one who actually goes and does stuff? Oh, Mitch worked on a shot all summer. Boy, I I can tell. It's just a, it's a laser. I can't even really hold... I apologize. I shouldn't be yelling at Mitch Marner, maybe, because... He, he held out the, the $10.8 million. They, that's going to be held against him, whether he likes it or not. You get paid $10.8 million, you better show up and friggin' play. I don't see too many other $10.8 million players in the NHL not showing up and play. Hello, Connor McDavid. Hello, Austin Matthews. Who's more than him? Tobal, Tavares, yeah, okay. The two together. You cannot make that much money and not expect a little criticism if you don't show up. Mitch Marner is a good player. He's a good NHL player. No doubt about it. He can kill penalties. He's got a bit of a skill set. I call him the, the Craig Janney. You know, if you remember anyone remembers Craig Janney, he just passes the puck. Maybe an Adam Oates. Maybe that's what he is. He passes the puck. He's got some playmaking skills. He doesn't drive no bloody line. He isn't the best player on his team. He's not even the fourth. But, well, he's maybe the no, fourth. But, no, I'm going to go fifth best player on the Leafs. I put Morgan Riley and Jake, uh, Jack Campbell ahead of him right now. It's more important to the Leafs. Maybe Brody. I, I got him down to six now. $10.8 million. So he's a good player, but he ain't 10.8. Now, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to give you a prediction for the season. Hold on. Because Leaf fans, like me, are probably sick of this crap. Now, we can't really boo Dubis. Uh, Tavares, we can give him the gears, I guess. But he came to Toronto. He chose Toronto. I guess. And here's another thing I love about it. Well, they want to play in Toronto. What kid in Ontario doesn't want to play in Toronto? I want to play in Toronto too. Can you believe it? Oh, it's so cool. I want to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Woo! Yeah! You get credit for that? Oh, Mitch really, really, really likes it. He's been dreaming about playing with the Leafs. John Tavares slept on it. I don't care what they did. They make... $21.8 million and are about as effective as me trying to put a tent together. $21.8 million for two players that are, I will say in the nicest term, have been ineffective in the last two games. So here's what's going to happen. Mitch is going to get booed. He will. It's coming. And then I'm going to hear his parents talk about social media bullying and you're bullying and it's it's wrong and you should be cheering for the team and, and you should be doing this and, oh, and heaven forbid, you're the worst person in the world if you boo Mitch Marner. Piss off. The reason why Mitch Marner is getting booed is he makes $10.8 million. We've lost players because of his contract and he's ineffective. If Mitch Marner made $2 million and was playing like this, he'd be... No one would say nothing. So I'm not the one who signed the $10.8 million contract. I'm not the person who did. I know someone who did, who told me he was so good. He was just as good as Matthews. 
So I'm sorry, he's going to get booed. And you can cry all he bloody well wants. You can go on freaking social media. Until Mitch Marner gets traded, I don't even want to hear about this organization. Don't want to hear about it. I'm going to do my reviews. I'm going to do whatever I saw. Now, granted, was Mitch Marner the worst player on the ice last night? Absolutely not. Worst player that I saw was Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall. It was disgraceful. And then I saw a whole bunch of forwards go out there and be about as ineffective as, like, nothing. Like, Casey, Camp. I don't know. Can they find another K? I, I don't know. What else? There? Can you get Vlad Vladimir Krutov out of Russia again? I don't, I don't know. You, you, the third and fourth line, I don't care less. You've loaded up your first two lines with your core. You put the two wrong players together. Mitch Marner should not be playing with Matthews. He should be playing with Tavares. And then you get the second line. So you get Mitch and John Tavares against the second defenseman in the second defensive line. They can be effective. Putting Tavares with Nylander against the second line is not as effective. Nylander and Matthews have more complementary skills. Anyways, hopefully Bell will let me PVR on CBC. Maybe they won't black it out on CBC or Sportsnet, whatever. TSN, disgraceful. Anyways, that's my rant for today. Lost to the Senators, 3-2. See you Saturday.